Debbie and thanks for joining me today as we have a go at making the homemade hanging towel for your kitchen. Let's have a look first at the materials that you'll need. You'll need the pattern piece, there's just one, it's very simple. You'll need a hand towel. We're going to cut this one in half and actually make two towels for the kitchen. So the kit is going to make two. I've also got two fabrics which coordinate together or you can just use one fabric front and back, that's fine. And because we're making two, I've got two chunky buttons. So the first thing we're going to need to do is cut our hand towel in half. So my towel, once I've laid it out, I can see that it's got stripes. Often kitchen towels do. So I've just counted the stripes in from either end, marked where the centre of the towel is. I'm just going to take my scissors and just cut this straight across the middle. Okay, so my two kitchen towels are now ready. I'm just going to make a note, obviously the edge which is cut could fray a little bit. So as you're handling the towels, do be careful not to, um, to make all these edges start to fray out too much. So I'm going to take each half now to my sewing machine. And where I have this raw edge, the edge that I've just cut, I'm going to do some basting stitches or gathering stitches. So I'll set my machine to the longest stitch length and close to this edge I'll just sew a line of stitches. I'm not going to back tack at either end, in fact I'm going to leave some nice long thread tails at either side and that's going to help me to gather. So once I've sewn some long stitches over here we'll come back and look at just gently gathering up the towels. Now my basting or gathering thread is in place, I just need to gather up by pulling on that thread and just gently moving it through the fabric. It can be quite hard on a toweling like this because the fabric's quite thick. So I am going to put another link where you can get details of another way to gather using dental floss that you might find easier if you have trouble with your towel um, because it's quite thick or if you have trouble with your thread breaking. So once you've gathered all the way along made the towel nice and tightly gathered. Then for now we'll do the same with the other towel and we'll just set them to one side because now we're going to work on the fabric piece, the part that's going to actually form the hanger. So I've cut out my four pattern pieces and I'm just going to layer them now right sides together. You could, if you have two like this, you could put those two together and two pink ones together. But I'm going to make matching ones so I'm going to add a pink and a blue and then a blue and a pink. And if we match these right sides together and just add in a few pins around the outside. And if we take this back now to the sewing machine, I'm going to start down in one corner, follow the line all the way up around the top and finish down the other corner but I will leave this bottom part open because this is where we're going to put the towel in later on. I'm going to use quite a narrow hem, I'm just going to line the edge of my press foot along the edge as I sew and it'll probably be between a quarter and a half an inch. So I'll do that now, I'll do it for both and then we'll come back and have a look at clipping the seams. So my piece is now sewn but there are quite a lot of curves on this piece and if we just try to turn it out now some of these curves they wouldn't sit very nicely so wherever you have a curved seam just take your scissors and make a little series of snips do it reasonably close to the stitching but obviously not so close that your fabric is going to be damaged or so close that you're going to actually cut through the stitching itself and I'm going to follow these curves and just make a little series of snips all the way around and then once I've done that, it's going to turn out much more neatly and we'll get a nice crisper finish around these curves. So I'll finish snipping and then we will turn it the right way out and have a look. So our piece is now turned right side out and because we clipped nicely, these curves are nice and smooth, I've taken the opportunity to take it over to the ironing board and I've given it a press so you can see that it looks nice and crisp. And at the same time, where we have these raw edges at the bottom, I've turned in half an inch or so, it doesn't have to be an exact amount, and just pressed those nice and neatly too. And these raw edges are going to be turned to the inside, and we'll have a look now at fitting the towel just in there. So now it's time to add the towel into this opening. I've just folded over the edges, 
popped those in at the corners here and here and just put the towel inside and as I fold down the top I'm just going to hold it there and make sure that my gathers look nice and even. If your towel has stripes try and make sure that the stripes are going to run parallel here and everything looks good. Once you're happy pop a few pins in place and then we need to take it to the sewing machine and stitch. Now obviously it's going to be bulky because you have a thick towel and it's gathered too. So there's going to be a, a lot of thickness there for your machine to go through. So do sew nice and slowly and carefully. If you have um, spectacles or something that's a great idea. If you don't then do be careful because if your needle were to, to break obviously there could be flying bits and pieces jumping about. So do be very careful with all of this. Uh, thickness here and proceed nice and slowly with your sewing machine. So sew reasonably close to the edge, say around a quarter of an inch from this folded over edge and then for security I'm going to sew a second line of stitching just above that too. So I'll go and do mine and then we'll go and see what that looks like. So my towel is now sewn securely in place and it's time for us to think about the button and buttonhole. So I've got my button here and lying it down, I think I'm going to want it to come around about here once it's buttoned down. So if I put my button where I think I want it to be, say there, and I'm just going to make a mark with my invisible marker. This one is, um, it just disappears over time. It's a disappearing ink marker, especially used for fabrics. And I'm just going to put a little mark there. That's where I'm going to want my buttonhole to start. So I'll switch out now to my buttonhole foot on my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch a buttonhole that will fit that button. There again is another tutorial if you aren't sure how to put on buttons with your sewing machine or how to stitch a buttonhole if you've never done that before don't worry at all it really is very very easy with your machine and I'm going to sew my buttonhole on here now and then we'll come back and fit the button too. So my buttonhole's completed, the machine did a great job and it looks really neat. So now it's just time to put the button on and we will be done. So I'm folding over the top, finding out where I want my button to be. I'm just going to thread the button halfway through the hole. Until it's there. Okay, now I'm happy. I can put my finger on the button, take the flap out of the way and I know this is exactly where I want my button to be. So I'll just place another couple of little marks with my disappearing marker so I can show exactly where my button's going to be. I'll take this back to the machine, sew, sew my button on, or of course you can do it by hand, and then we'll come back and have a look at the finished article. So now our hand towels are complete. You can simply unbutton them, hang them over a towel rail, or maybe even over the oven door handle, and your kitchen towel will always be ready and exactly where you expect it. It's really nice to hang them over the oven door because then when the oven is on, your towels are always nice and warm and dry. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.